Well, hi, good morning, and thanks for joining me in my shop where I just changed my clock back to 8 o'clock in the morning up here. By the way, my, my big red clock here is actually a radio. I don't know if I've ever... That's an untuned FM station there. But that's not the radio we're interested in. It's this one here. Now, I think the next logical step for me to take with this little radio is to uh, try and align it. And I'm using the word try there because of this. Uh, so these are the two IF transformers. This one's an oddball on the uh, schematic. Um, it, it's, it's not. It's not your. It's not your usual IF transformer. Nevertheless, it's a tuned transformer. I believe this is a single slug tuned transformer. There. Let's just take a look underneath. Yeah, there's there's no way of getting up under that. So I think it's a single slug moving between the two transformer coils. This one's got two capacitors up here to tune to tune it. So uh, the instructions refer to both of these as just IF transformers, IF number one and IF number two. There's no hint anywhere I can find about anything to do with them. The problem here, as as if you've watched the other videos, of course you, you know this. Uh, this radio has the uh, place where the screwdriver goes in uh, uh, broken off, and I did exactly the same thing to that radio. I'm, I'm myself trying to move the slug. It's a bit of a curious arrangement here with a some kind of a, a large. N uh, not some kind, a, a large nut on the outside here and then you have this piece, this collar and then in is the actual slug which uh, which doesn't seem to want to move so there's a chance I cannot adjust this um, goodness knows where it's adjusted now my little bit of playing this radio tuning through a single a single signal uh, really, uh, indicates or suggests that, that the radio is not aligned. I, I seem to pick the same station up three different peaks uh, as I tuned across. And also seem to be very broadband on here too. Uh, so, how to approach this? So normally you do the second transformer first. And the second is the one that I, I don't know what to do with it. You know what I think maybe I'll do? I'm going to set up my uh, my sweep uh, generator, and we'll put a sweep through the IF of this and try to see what the output looks like, and see if we can get get some feel for it that way. Uh, I, th I think that's a good starting point. We'll just kind of examine the situation as it stands now using the sweep sweep generator. Okay, let's take a look at what I've got going here. So the radio is not on yet. So I have the sweep generator. Let me check. Starting at 425. Things are drifting just a little bit here. 425. So 425 is 30 below 455. So 30 above 455 is 485. It's drifting just a bit too. These don't have to be precise. So what that's going to do then, it's going to set up the sweep here so that uh, 425 is here and 485 is there and 455 should be right in the middle. You see I have a camera so you can get a close look at the, uh, at the scope there. Uh, I'll start the sweep. It puts a line on the scope. Here, I make sure the line is centered properly or the 455 won't be in the center. And this is kind of rough to start off with. So the output from the sweep generator is being fed as per instructions. Well, the instructions are just for a straight generator, not a uh, not a sweep generator. It doesn't really matter. The connection is made right to the antenna capacitor here, the stator side of the antenna tuning capacitor. That's what this is doing. And I've stuck in a one 
a 0.1 microfarad capacitor as suggested in the uh, alignment instructions. I think we're ready. Oh yeah, and then the uh, scope uh, vertical is connected here right to the speaker. Um, I sort of prefer to have it connected to the AVC, but not to start. Let's try it here. Uh, the, rate, the instructions for the radio uh, assume you're using a single frequency uh, alignment method. You're not, you're not trying this sweet thing that I'm doing. Put this back here a little bit. Okay, I think we're all set. Uh, volume down. Switch on. Power on. Dim bulbs. The uh, output of the sweep generator is minimal right now. There's some uh, pads here, 10, 20, and 30 dB pads. And when I pop this out, it's 30 dB increase in strength, which is a lot. Okay, a little radio, make some sound. Not a sound. Of course, the input signal is very low. So we'll start raising the input signal. You can keep your eye on the scope there, too. Scope sensitivity is set to uh, 0.2 volts per division. Okay, uh, up the input uh, strength. There it is. Oh, I put my arm right in front of the scope. Okay, let's see what's on that scope. Uh, yeah, what the heck is that? A little more signal strength? and back down. So that, that back down thing I just did, I, I, I barely moved it down and it went right off. Watch. I don't know if you'd be able to see this. With So this is the uh, amplitude control here. Let me turn it right down. What I'm trying to, to show you is how uh, fast and powerful the AVC is in this radio here. Up. If it's the ABC, now I'm gonna back down the signal strength a little bit. You see how each time I back it down, initially it's the ABC setting for the higher power. I back down the strength, the ABC setting takes some time to come down. So as I turn it down, you see it gets stronger. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't make sense. It gets weaker. And then as the AVC voltage relaxes, the radio's uh, uh, amplification comes up again. Watching on this camera here. So this is proof of, of AVC operation. Turn it up again and start backing it down. I suppose the opposite is true too. If I if I shoot it up, this should become uh, oversized and then be shrunk down by uh, upcoming ADC voltage. It's very fast, very fast, but much slower on the downward stroke. Okay, that's enough of the ADC. Now, if you're like me, you're saying, "Wait a minute, <laughs> is this supposed to be one nice peak here, like this, and or something of that sort, or or maybe an S curve or something? Well, what is what's going on here? That's a really good question. What is going on there? Okay, so uh, I think I'm going to change my camera arrangement here. So I'm going to stop for a moment, and change my camera views. Okay, so that's a little odd looking, isn't it? <laughs> but. Uh, it just so happens I've got the scope position where the scope really is. Good show. Why, why all those funny peaks? Uh, so let me just vary the level again. It, it doesn't change the peaks. It's, it's, it's not, there's a bit of overloading there right at the end. Incidentally, thumbs up on the speaker. <laughs> So I'm, I'm going to move some of these uh, adjustments around and just see what happens. Try the capacitors in the first transformer. 
not not worried about them being tuned accurately. I'm just interested in what happens. Okay. Oh, short shorted out the. Oh, look at that. Doesn't seem to like the spot it was in. Let me try the other. The other one here. Oh my gosh. So as I say, I usually do this from the AVC voltage. You get a little bit of a different, a different look. Isn't that interesting? If I if I turn this too far this way, we get a a, a new hump showing up. Oop. As if there's something right in here that that the hump is moving through, but it, it can't. There is something, a little wiggly thing in there. It's probably not visible. Uh, you know, it'd be related to the radio tuning. Let, let me show you what I'm talking about here. If I can get it on, on here. Uh, I turn the brightness down a bit. It might be able to make it more visible. There. So you see how, how this dip here it's got a wiggle in it. Oops, move the screwdriver. It's very hard to see on the camera, I'm afraid. There's another little wiggle in the bottom here, too. But this top part, no, no wiggle. It's nice and clean at the top. You can kind of see the bottom is shaking a little bit. Now I'm going to tune the radio a touch, and I think what we're going to see is those, those shakes are going to vary. Because I think what we're seeing is a signal coming in on the antenna. So here we go. I'm starting to tune, tune the radio. Tune it, come on, move it. There it goes. Oh yeah, did you see that thing go shooting through there? Here. So the radio is self-tuning itself right now. The capacitor is falling. I'll help it a bit. There we are. Now you can clearly see right, right up in here. This is an interference signal. And sometimes I use a another signal generator to produce this kind of effect to verify the frequency where these peaks are. So that's all that is. The instructions say tune the radio where there won't be any interference. Maybe there. We'll try there. Next thing is uh, volume control shouldn't have any effect on this. This is the radio turned up full. That's full blast. You turn it down a bit, just a bit. That's about 10 degrees back. It went down and came up a little bit as the AVC got out of the way. But this volume's almost full. Hey, input signal too low? Or there's lots of room for more input? Not really. It starts distorting. Uh, let's carry on with the alignment. Now all these problems will go away if this radio is aligned properly. So we've seen using the uh, sweep generator. Uh, I'm going to switch it now from a sweep generator to a non-sweep generator. And I'm going to set this to... Oh, you know what? I can't do it with this. This is an unmodulated, unmodulated signal generator. I have to switch to a different generator at this point. That's okay though. We can leave the sweep on and stick this other generator in there with it. And then we can use that little squiggly thing to identify the frequency of the other generator I'm setting up right now. So we will put this exactly the same. Clip it on here. Now it's going to cause the uh, output of each generator to be fed into the input of the other. But these aren't that strong. Let's get it sweeping here. 
I'm trying to brighten this up because I can barely see that myself. Okay, that looks good in my eye. These are tricky things to put on a camera. Uh, stuff like that. Okay, now we want to set the other signal generator into the IF frequency range and then see it, hear it, hear it, hear it and see it. Signal strength is pretty high. Here we go. That's probably where the radio is tuned right now. So I'm going to move the tuning. Yeah, so we're just picking this up via the radio. That's good. It's making it into the IF, showing up in the speaker. That's how it's supposed to work. Shouldn't see anything there. Over there. Okay, here we come. So when you look on the scope now, you see this part jumping up and down here? That part is this frequency. Now you gotta subtract one from this number to get a, one or two to get it more accurate. So this is 465. So there, there's a peak at 465 or a, a squiggle. Let's keep going down. So this is where it's supposed to be, 455. And I'm not sure where the squiggle is here. It's spread all over the place. Maybe right there. My start and stop frequencies have probably varied on the other signal generator, so the whole display has shifted a bit. Okay. Um, stop the sweep. We should, we should be able to see something from, not see, but hear. Hear something from here. We don't hear anything. What happened? Shouldn't we hear it? Am I not feeding the IF? Was it not showing up? It was showing up in the speaker until I cut this guy. I pushed the wrong, oh, I stopped the sweep. That's what I did, right. Right. Why can't we hear this? I have to crank it up to some stupid input level. Let's vernier this back. Doesn't sound distorted and we can hear it. I flip the scope onto its more normal operation here. Just for fun, so we have something to look at. I'll recenter this. That's what's coming out of the speaker right there. So the objective now is to maximize, well, basically, maximize this voltage here. Tuning the radio. Let's see if I can make this just a little more convenient to look at. A little more convenient. So it's just just over a division. Okay, let's fill it with these. See if we can make it bigger. Don't don't like the way I'm doing this. Of course, we can hear. Whoops, we can hear what I'm doing. Turn this down a bit for me. Just realize it's a little bright on the camera. Very clear peak there. The other one. I'm doing the wrong transformer first here. 
Ooh. Let's try a non-metal screwdriver. Sometimes it's just a mechanical, just physical pressure on these things that make uh, changes. Can't get this any better. Okay. Let me go back to the sweep here. Sensitive. So as I said, I don't normally use a scope with a speaker. Um, so I'm going to move these adjustments a little bit and just watch that, like watch this, this little bump here and stuff. I mean, what, what do you think? I mean, really, this is this is the 455 spot. Let's just go over a bit. I mean, doesn't that look better to you? It sounds better. It looks better. Let me try this one here. Oh, that other peak. Oh, look at that. Okay, we'll bring this one. And we'll bring this one back. Okay, it's moving the other one. So the way I think of these is I'm moving two peaks across each other. And sometimes you can look at the display. You can kind of, kind of see the peak traveling. Uh, other times... <laughs> nice I'm just kind of randoming it it's nice in that it's just a simpler shape it's still still got this bump out here I, I, I like how this is going much better than what I was doing with just the uh, single frequency thing So you can kind of kind of see the bump come in this way, then it sort of you sort of lose track of it, it gets messed up, and then it shows up out here leaving. I don't know if that's really true. And then we have the other transformer, which I haven't done anything with because I don't know what to do with it yet. Maybe you can over over tune these, make them a little too sharp. Well, you can in some cases. Well, I don't know what to do about this little bump. It's going to stay out there for now. Maybe that's the other coil doing that. The other transformer. Let's bring in the uh, frequency here and just see where 455 showed up. Okay, so that's basically 455. It's right in there. And just listening to the radio, let's turn the sweep off. Listen, listen to the radio. And the ABC can throw you off on this, but I, I think it's right on. 455 now. That seems to be the loudest spot there. Good, that's one transformer done. Did it make any difference? Uh, quickly, grab an antenna, somebody. Somebody get me an antenna here. Okay, so we're gonna take this off. The radio is now more or less its normal self. It's abnormal self, and we 
I'll stick the antenna on here. It's not bad, it's not bad. Not particularly good, but okay. We ground out the antenna line. better. I still hear the clicks in here very, very faintly now. It's certainly not a screamingly loud radio, is it? Let's tune around. Ooh. So I'm just moving the tuning capacitor. That's terrible. That is terrible. So what I might want to try now is, uh, um, so I verified the local oscillators in there. Uh, let's check the radio sensitivity. And we'll fire in a signal from the signal generator. Too many clip leads here. Look, that's a whopper. And that's the IF frequency coming through. Okay, so the radio's tuned, I don't know, around a million somewhere. So let's go there and see what happens. Um, full blast. So that, that's as high as I can tune on this band. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna knock the tuning lower on the radio. Oh, I heard it go by. I heard it go by. Okay, that's full volume. The signal strength now is, uh, is not really, really high. It's kind of a moderate signal. The weak one would be like this. And the strong one sounds like it's too much. Somewhere in the radio, it's a little too much. So we force the radio to 640. That's going to be tricky here. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Just no, that might actually be the let me just tune this down. Oh, I think I went way too far. Stick tuning, the original radio tuning methods. So I, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm tuning the radio to a radio station signal. Trying anyway. Okay. So it's tuned to 640. That's as good as I can get it. There is a nice station there. I plan to hear it. So first we'll switch off of this, switch back on to the outdoor antenna. Anybody hear anything? I don't hear anything that sounds like a uh, station. So what we're going to do now is, uh, where is it? I'm going to find my loop antenna. We're going to try to give a stronger signal to work with. I have to go off and search my loop antenna. Where is it? Okay, we're ready to experiment here. My, my loop antenna is set up just behind me here. You can see it right there. And it's aimed at Toronto, which is where the uh, station is coming from that I'm trying to get. Let's go up and look at it this way. 
This is the lead from the uh, uh, loop antenna behind me, which may or may not be tuned properly. It's connected to nothing right now. This is the antenna from the radio. I will be the antenna. Hey, not bad. I just point at the station I want. Nope, I'm not very directional. Now we'll try the loop antenna. First I'll put on the ground. A loop antenna is a two wire antenna. You can't have one wire. So this radio is not really made for this. It's made for a, a, a single wire. We'll see what happens. That's a little bit disappointing, isn't it? We need to check something here. These clip leads. are fine. Oh, it's that AVC. Slow AVC. Fool me. Okay, gotta put this back on. Now the reason this is this is you're hearing sound now when I clip this on it's all gonna disappear. You know, hey what kind of antenna is that? Um, so right now as far as the radio is concerned it's hooked up to a wire antenna. There's only one lead connected, right? This one. And so with a wire antenna, high impedance, it's just a bunch of wire behind me in space, it starts picking up noises and things like that, and, and potentially radio stations. When I clip this on, it'll go quiet. And the reason that's happened is because the loop antenna is pretty much a short circuit. Uh, that's what this radio is kind of looking back at, a short circuit. And so shorted antenna, everything goes quiet. But it's not completely shorted and the loop antenna will generate a very powerful signal that can overcome its own low impedance let's put it that way so you end up with a low impedance antenna knocks all the noise out and with a strong uh, signal you get well let's see what we get so we're pretty sure this is tuned to 640 i don't think i moved it did i and we don't hear anything right now probably because the antenna is not tuned that's what I'm hoping anyway. Or this is a sign that this radio's sensitivity is really terrible. Okay, so I got some tuning capacitors down on the bottom there. I'm going to tune them and we'll just listen and hope the radio comes to life. Here. This is a augmented capacitor. Here we are. Pretty strong noise signal here. And maybe I can mull it out a bit if my thumbs in the pen. Not too good. But I hear something. So that that sounds like audio with uh, hum in it. Garbling, it making it sound garbled. Let's take a look on the scope here and see what it looks like. Don't see anything on the scope in particular. So it's possible that there's two signals reaching the radio right now. <laughs> I can see what one of them might be. One of them might be this. No. No, the lead wasn't close enough to the radio. The other signal can be a noise signal in here. It just happens to be right where the station is. And the two of them combined are producing this kind of sound. And that, that, that's it for volume. So up to this point, what I've been doing is I've been trying to ignore this coil. Because <laughs> I don't know what to do with it. But I can't ignore it any longer. It may be the cause of the situation here. The weakness on the radio and everything. 
Um, let's fool around a little more with this. So I'm going to adjust the antenna trimmer a little bit. Completely inappropriate to do with a loop antenna on there, but. There's a good chance the radio is not exactly tuned. I'm going to try my best to precision tune it with a stick here. Well, it doesn't do anything about the garble. We'll fiddle with the IF, even though I finished aligning it. Uh, just fiddle with it a bit. So I'm, this is my pointer. I can return it back to this this point here. Here, here. Let's try the other one. A touch more volume, but no more, uh, no getting rid of that no, uh, uh, double. Well, I've got no... Just turn it back a bit, it's pretty much gone. Just the slightest amount back. What to do about this? So I was thinking, um, so there's a slot. I think there's a slot. I thought there was a slot. Let's take a close look at that. Uh, a close look at that character there. I can just use the uh, camera as it sits. I gotta get right up close to it and look for a hint on. I, you know, I'm, I'm worried there's a locking nut or something like that that I have to figure out. It looks to me like this this outer outer piece, this outer threaded piece, would be the the structure, if you like, the uh, the, uh, the 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 core inside this can is hooked up to this thing. If that's the case, then spinning this piece, this this threaded piece here, would rip rip everything apart inside. This upper piece. I'm sure is connected to a slug and uh, on both this radio and the other radio this is all the way down I mean you can't get it much lower right eh? so you'd want to turn it upwards upwards I 
Okay, getting rid of this. Did it just move? Hey, it's moving. Put a touch of uh, oil or something right in there. That might not be a good idea. Oil will get right down to the... Just a tiny amount. It's coming looser. <laughs> okay, so what's happening with the radio tuning now? Since I've discovered that's that's loose. That's a good question. Okay, there's what we've got. Now I'm going to start use a screwdriver on it. Start moving this a bit and try to spot what goes on on the uh, screen here. Okay, here we go. What's with the static? You know what? I don't like that. I'm going to use this again. Did I use that? Did I use this? What did I do? Okay, I don't know. okay come on. There it goes. Anything moving on there? got way up here. Why isn't he in the middle? Just check my sweep settings for a moment here. Uh, 425 to 485. I put it up there when I was fiddling around. I think it should be here in the middle. Should not. I moved it with this other coil. I can't imagine that. I haven't seen any movement yet. Maybe this this slug could be driven like stupidly down. Maybe it's supposed to be way up here. Maybe it's maybe it's way down. I mean that would make some sense. Also this this sound is the sound these things make when you get to their limits. They make these squeaky sounds warning you to stop. <laughs> I'm getting warned to stop. But I mean this adjustment can only go up can't go down. And then that would explain how you broke, somebody screwed it all the way down. Hey, this thing's loose. <laughs> Screw it all the way down until they broke the tip off. I can grab the other half here with a pair of pliers and twist on that, but let's try this. You know what? A fatter, fatter bladed screwdriver might do better. A fatter bladed screwdriver would be, where are you? Uh, the one I have in mind is probably too big. Here it is right here, right in front of my face. Let's try this. No, that's actually worse. So if this is all the way down and jammed, then backing it up should make it come looser and looser, and then suddenly it should just be great. And that, that terrible noise should disappear. Oh, you know what? I just ground away whatever was left for the screwdriver to grab. Okay, so the next death defying feat here. I'm going to grab what's left of that tang and try to turn this. I'm going to twist it right off. I just twist that part right off. Will I? Really? So 
So I, uh, I, no, I can't, can't do it like that. My left hand is sore today because I, well, no, it's going gonna, it's gonna to twist that tab right off. Oh, there it is. Okay, so we've cleaned off the top of this now. Good work, Jim. Can I grab it directly? Isn't that scary? You know, when you grab a tool really hard, you really grab it hard and you start working with it, you have a hard time discerning how much pressure you're putting on the work versus what you're doing with your hand up here. And you can easily get really brutal and not realize you're destroying a radio you're working on. I, 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 I. You also, anything going on in that scope? <laughs> Come on, just give me a little indication. You know, the next, the next approach is to remove the whole thing from the radio. I have another one. I have another radio. I have a donor radio. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. Let's turn this guy off. Get the donor. He's become the donor. This was this was supposed to receive the donations. But in the end, the donor is the one I'm working on. Okay, uh, so we have the same situation here with the uh, half the tab missing here. Oh, it looks like it's just screwed in. Looks to me like you could take this this piece off, undo the nuts underneath, and this this would come right off and leave the whole thing sitting there for us to look at. That's my plan. Okay, let's do that. Let's do that. So we'll go here. Hope that was on camera. The screws are kind of accessible here. One of them is, the other one is just buried under all these parts. Oh my gosh. Well, just gonna get in there. I'm just, just gonna do it. Oh, did you see that? That's stiff insulation. Okay, a little tiny, a little tiny. Oh my gosh, do I have a little tiny guy that will go in there? the right size. It can't get down over the... That was easy. This other one. Get your finger pinched in a pair of pliers? Yes. Too many times. I just saw this thing. Yeah, it's Lucy. Yeah. I'm going, to do, I'm going to cut the wires under here too and the whole thing's going to come out. That's what I'm going to do. Come on. Almost 
holes there. finger. Did I finish that sentence? I uh, had to transfer a cord of firewood from my driveway into my garage and stack it up. If you don't know how much a cord of wood is, it's a lot of wood. <laughs> In the course of doing that, I of course, wore everything out. Off. Off. Lucky to have another radio like this. Off. Nip there. Off and out you come. There it is. <laughs> it's all the goodies falling out. Let's put this guy aside. What hay we got here? There's the coil. You can see a big slug in there. There's a. Uh, can you see that in the camera? I guess you can. There's a, a cutout on this thing, which I think you would have a locking pin on to keep this top piece from moving. The slug is large, about the same diameter as the uh, coil, so as the coil form. Let's take it right out. Yeah, that's, that's gonna hurt. I thought the this ring part is fixed onto the form. You have the uh, screw coming through. There's the two transformers. Better, better, better take it easy on this coil. I might need it. Now, why, why? So the slug. Well. how I broke the last one. I have a lot more control now though. I can feel it, I can feel it uh, jumping inside, moving, you know. I'm pretty sure what's happened is someone has driven it down too low. get any better look and I gotta preserve this. Gotta be careful with this. Uh can actually shoot a little bit of oil right up in here. Did I say a little bit? not 
because it got screwed down and jammed, but it's because some kind of interactions occurred. There's some corrosion in here. I don't think so. It looks all brass to me. Brass is the kind of metal they like to use. It's non uh, magnetic and that is what's really great in these applications. So I mean if I put too much pressure on this I, I will rip this top piece off of here. The question is what am I resisting? Is, is, is it the threads in here or is it the slug itself down there? And the slug has to spin. That's probably the problem. That's probably the problem. Is the slug is the, the size of the inside diameter of this tube. And so you've got this big, it's like, it's like this, it's like this. It's just like the screwdriver. I got the shaft you're trying to tune with. And meanwhile, this thing is jammed. Look at the, the uh, uh, leverage here. So a little bit of jamming down here, fat chance you're going to break it free up here. If that's what's happened. And what would it jam into? It would jam into wax. That would make it pretty tough to turn this. Resulting in the destruction of the top. So if it's wax, it says wax right here, then a hot air gun could loosen this guy right up. And then that would apply to the one in the radio too, which I, I, I one way or another I could heat it up. And you know what I'm going to do right now while you're watching? Right as you watch me do this, I am going to make a mistake here. I am going to do this, and we're going to get rid of that off the screen there. So, uh, so okay, so you can't unoil it after I spray oil up in there. I can't unoil it, but I can unheat it after I heat it a bit. So I, 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 if I'm heating it up, it's because I think the slug is jammed and not, not up in here. I'm going to clamp this and destroy it. So I'm, I'm turning against the form, so I need to lock the form. This is, I don't want to crush it. I easily get crushed here. So I don't know if this is going to work at all. That's usually the case, though. So the idea is, I heat this, turn that, and have it held in here tight enough. I don't. It's a long shot. So this is a hot air gun. the temperature to 100 degrees C at the nozzle here. And watch this piece of wax to let me know when I've just gone too far with this. This will probably take a little while to heat up. It's pretty hot air. Trying to heat the slug deep inside here, so this will probably probably require quite a bit of time. Quite a bit of time. And how am I going to know? Only by test trying. Okay, so I'm going to kill the uh, video here while I do this, because it's going to go on for a while. And I'm working the mouse with my left hand, what can I tell you? Here we go. So how hot is this? 
fucking guy now. Let's find out. I've got a thermal viewer here, which is accurately calibrated. We're going to take a look at it. Entangle things here a little bit. It's a red there, so I'm going to move the thermal gun out of the way because its its air is visible in this. So there's our guy. Now, how hot is it? So the highest temperature is right there, 62. How's it feel? Pretty warm. Well, you know, it's not that warm. It's not that warm. Something in here is 62 degrees, but the bulk of that is just 30. That's not very warm. Okay, we got a long ways to go again. I think. That's 100 degrees C. 100 degrees C coming out of that. Ah, let's check this out. Is the uh, this wax getting soft here. Oh yeah. That's one of the hottest areas though. But that that's what I'm looking for. So. Uh, this uh, hot air gun is actually designed to melt solder, to run at temperatures high enough to melt solder. Uh, I've never done that. Okay, I think it's probably ready, ready to give it a try here. Let me shut off the gun. It's warm. Yeah. This will probably come right, right out of the grip vise here. What are the chances? The whole form is turning. Yeah, so it's going to come out. Grinding wires. Ooh, I almost pinched that wire there. In case I need this later. She's a hot one. She's hotter than I realized. Something's turning. Ooh. Wow, that's a horror story. That is one horror story. And I don't even know if this is going to help that radio at all. Wow! Wow, you should never have to put that kind of force on one of these things. Okay, so what this means is it's a good time to stop ponder my situation, wonder why it's going so poorly, what am I doing wrong, what should I be doing instead, and uh, well, it's nowhere near lunchtime. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go and visit my cats, talk to my wife, see what's happening, and see if I can come up with a way around this situation. Well, I'm thinking maybe maybe a closer examination might reveal something. So let's take a closer look in here with this camera up here. And uh, yeah, I'm going to get some light in there too. Okay, let me get my little light here. Yeah, let's see if we can do this. I don't know if I can really shine light in there. The camera's in the way. Just need, I need like a, just a, a light blaster here to see in there. Okay, this didn't work.
Okay, so that is the top of the big carbon uh, slug, and you can see just, just right there's some what looks like a little wall of wax there. It just looks like it's fused right into the wall, just like I'm thinking. And that might be all the way up the side of that slug. It might just be frozen on the inside of this thing. Which would suggest it's never going anywhere. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. Didn't the designers think about what would happen in the year 2020 to their their guy here? They, make, they just... Wow. And they had no expectation that their radio would be still around. So what I want to try to do here is try to pick at the edge. This probably isn't sharp enough, in fact. I'm trying to catch catch the edge. Feel it. I get it. A more pin like thing, like a pin. Like magic. I can feel the edge there. All the way around. What if I kind of try to work it? Can I work it away? Can I, can I see this happening? Can I see the slug moving as I work it? And what are the chances of that? be upside down and I'm getting quite confused in <laughs> the camera. The camera, the camera, and the camera. You can see that wall of wax there. Let me try this. Uh, if I can see if I can see if the slug turns at all when I uh, try to turn it. So I can I can try turning the shell around it. Back. It's just really, you know, I got the camera right up close, so it's blocking the light from getting in in here. Okay, can I turn this on the slug? If it's wax, then that means it would it, it might move, but just be very very slow. Okay, hold still. Now I'm applying force. Yes, 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 yes. It turned, it turned, it turned. Good. Okay, so the slug is not frozen in there. The slug is not frozen in there. as I expected. Yeah, that's it. That's more normal. And you know what else? It almost looks like the shaft is bent here. I don't think so. I'm 
imagining it. Look at that. This is what has to happen to that other coil. How far up would you go? Oh, it seems to have tightened right up there. Okay, so that's the maximum height on this one. Oh. There. So now the thing is, assuming I'm all correct on this, that the slug is what's dragging on the form, and if I go on the good radio and I just give this thing a crank, the form may spin on this piece here. And then that would be probably the end of everything. We don't we don't know how they've done this part here. Probably glued in. Ah, uh, you know I can think I can see a bit of glue up in here. Glued in. Didn't I move that a little bit? If I moved it a little bit, I should be able to move it more. Let's go back to the real one now. A little bolder since I have a, apparently have a spare. Let's flip this right around here. This. Okay, man. Okay, realizing that this could be destructive. disaster here. Now when the person tightened this down, it must have made this sound. <laughs> what did they think? Did they think, oh, good, it's tightening up. This is not easy to turn. I mean, there's a lot of leverage here. Almost laughing at me. Where's the other coil? So that's the limit. So we're in the kind of in the halfway range here. Let's go a touch higher. Can I can I turn it with a screwdriver now? Is there enough of a slot here. No, no. It's going to have to be by by plier. Okay, let's turn this guy back on. Get them all set up. So we still have the sweep running. We still have this connection. And we don't have but we don't have the scope connected anymore. So I don't know for sure that somebody cranked all this down uh, in, you know, uh, inappropriately. I, I don't really know how it got to be the way it is. It seems that way. It seems that way. Okay, a few tools away. I'll just pile them over there. Are we ready? So the objective here is to try to turn this and see some effect on my scope. Turn on the radio first. Everybody okay here? Everybody okay? Yes. Okay, tube's warming up. Volume is currently turned up. So I've already adjusted this a fair distance. So and here we got something coming up on the scope already. Now, I think uh I think we'll start by looking at the scope image here. How about a little bit of better focus? Okay, checking the sweep range. 
we're starting at uh, 4.23, should be 4.25, just one second here. And we're stopping at, it should be 4.85, this thing drifts downwards. There we are. Uh, so everything being correct, 455 is here, not over here. Okay, so I'm going to try to uh, adjust that coil. You know what? I'm going to switch. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to put that there, and then you just bear with me here for a moment while I do my best to stick that camera right here. Okay. Hey, it's fun, what can I tell you? Now, we want to look at these peaks here and see something happen. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna force these more into the middle by changing one of the settings on here. Just so we can see them a little better. Every every time I move around this radio. Okay, something move. Nothing moved. Try again. So I'm hoping one of these is going to move or change. I'm not moving this very far each time I do this. I didn't, I didn't see a thing. <laughs> so what happened here? Somebody was working on this radio. They got to this stage. There's a problem in the radio which they did not identify. They tried to tune the problem out by turning this all the way to the bottom. They got it to the bottom. They couldn't get it up again. They broke the tab off. It didn't help anyway because there's another problem in this radio maybe I, I'm this is my theory on this so turning this up and down doesn't do anything helpful so I'm feeding the signal basically through this tube into this coil and onwards And, and all it says in the instructions is adjust these to get a maximum maximum response. So it's not quite what we're looking at here right now. Be more like, more like this. Oh, this this isn't going to work. It's not going to work. I have to put a uh, modulated signal into it. Oh my my! Is this the way this radio is supposed to work? Oh, the cat's come to my rescue. And it's good timing, cat, because uh, I'm a little bit stuck here. Hey, what are you doing? Yes, I know it's raining. It's a rainy day today, and guess what? Later today, the rain is going to turn into snow. <laughs> what? November 1st, snow. There you go. It's not so. Uh... <laughs> Just I don't know. Bye bye. Yeah, wave bye bye to it. That's what you should do. Okay. Well, I didn't get anywhere decent today. Um, certainly know a lot more about this coil now. Uh, still not getting any kind of decent response though. 
And even though my cat has come up to help me, I think I'm done for the day here. Shadow, you've come just a little late in the game to help me out. To help me out here. Isn't that right? Yes. She knows my feelings are hurt, so she's come to give me comfort. Well, that's it. Like I said, that's it for today. Thanks a lot for watching. And uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, you know what they say, tomorrow is another day. Tomorrow is another day. Isn't that right? Okay, thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.